User pools enable users to sign up and sign in to your web or mobile apps. Once you have a user pool, you can create, confirm and manage users' accounts. You can also import your existing users into your new user pool. This enables a seamless migration of users from an existing user directory to your user pool when the user signs up to your user pool for the first time. To create a user pool, sign in to your AWS Cognito console. Select a region for your user pool. Select Manage User Pools. Select Create a User Pool. Give a name for your user pool. Note that you can't change the name after creating the user pool. Select Step Through Settings to select the attributes. Or select Review Defaults to confirm the default selected attributes. You can edit the default attribute selections here if you like. Attributes are pieces of information about a user, for example, name and email. User pools have a set of default attributes, but you can also add your own custom attributes. Default attributes are implemented according to OpenID specifications. The default attributes are optional. Simply check the box to make them required. Usernames and preferred usernames. A username is required and is not the same as a name. Usernames must be unique within a user pool. A username can't be changed after creating the user. You can, however, also use preferred username, which can be changed as a username. If your app does not need a username, then let it create a unique username in the background which is used to register the user. Aliases Email, phone and preferred username can all be marked as an alias. Aliases must be unique per user pool. Users can then sign in using the alias instead of a username. You can't use the same email or phone as the username for your alias. Here you can select how you want your user to sign in. The default sign in is with the username and password. You can use email, phone and preferred username attributes as an alias instead of your username. Custom attributes. You can add up to 25 custom attributes at any time. Custom attributes can only be optional and not required. You also cannot delete or edit custom attributes once they have been added to the pool. We have finished selecting our attributes, now let's move on. We are going to skip the next sections, policies, MFA, message customization, tags, devices, app clients, triggers, as we can edit these after the user pool has been created. So select Review and then Create Pool to create our user pool. Once the pool has been created, we will see this success message. Once you have created a user pool, you can edit some of the settings. Let's have a look. General Settings, Users and Groups. Here you can import users from existing user directory or a database. There are two methods of importing your existing users into your, your new user pool. You can use a Lambda trigger to migrate users when they sign in for the first time using Cognita. Users then can then continue using the existing password. You can also migrate users in bulk using a CSV file containing the user profile attributes for all the users. Create users. Here you can create new users, disable and delete users, enable multi-factor authentication for a user if you have enabled multi-factor authentication as optional for your users. Search for users using various attributes. Groups. You can create groups of users to apply a, perm a permissions policy to all the group members. 
simply create a group and add users to it then add I am permission policies to the group to control the members access attributes you can't edit the attributes that you selected when you created the user pool but you can add custom attributes policies this is where you can specify your password strength whether you want your users to sign themselves up um, you can either let the administrators create users in the console or you can let your users sign up themselves. You can also set how long an admin created user account lasts before it expires if not used. The default is 7 days and the maximum is 90 days. Once the user logs in, the account never expires. MFA and verifications. Multi-factor authentication increases your user security. Phone numbers must be verified if you use MFA. You can make MFA optional for your users, in which case individual users can have MFA enabled. Or you can make MFA required for all users. Verification. Users that sign themselves up need to be confirmed before they can sign in. Imported and created users are already confirmed. Users can receive a verification code via phone or email. Verification is required to automatically confirm users and enable password recovery. An alternative form of verification besides sending a verification code is by using a pre-sign up Lambda trigger and by using the admin confirm sign up API. Role for SMS messages. If you intend sending SMSs, then you need to create a role that has permission to send SMSs. Advanced Security Select here if you want to further protect your users. Message Customization You can customize the verification email message sent to your users. You can also customize your user invitation messages. Tags you can use cost allocation tags to categorize and track your AWS costs. Remember devices. Select here if you want to track the devices users have logged into. App clients. App clients need unauthenticated access to APIs to register, log in and handle forgotten passwords. To access these APIs, the API clients will need a unique client ID and optionally a client secret key. It is not secure sending client secrets on the URL using client-side JavaScript, so the Cognito JavaScript SDK does not use the app client secret. The client secret is used by Android and iOS as their server-side components can secure the client secret. If you choose to create a secret key, then you must use it. Note that you can't change the secret key once you have created it. Triggers. You can customize workflows and user experience by triggering your Lambda functions here. You can create your own Lambda functions and then have them triggered by a user pool operation such as sign up, confirmation and sign in. This is where you'll set up the Lambda trigger. An example is triggering a Lambda function when a user signs in to migrate that user from your existing users into your new Cognito user pool. App integration. Complete this section if you want to use the built-in sign-up and sign-in hosted pages or if you want to use the OAuth2 flows. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out our next tutorial where we show you how to create an identity pool. If you found this tutorial useful, why not give it a like, subscribe and hit the notification button so that you're notified when next we release a tutorial. Thanks.